Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this episode I had a question. I was wondering what kind of payload capacity would a rocket have if it just used BE3 engines from Blue Origin in a Falcon 9 configuration. In other words, uh, have nine of them in the sea level configuration on the first stage and then one of them in vacuum configuration with a bigger nozzle on the second stage. And, well, uh, we, we might as well test that. So here we are. Now, I put my BE3 configurations on the J2 model, but technically speaking, the sea level ones should be smaller. They shouldn't have such a big nozzle like the J2 does. Um, I'll come up with a different model later. Uh, I'll probably put it on the Vicus engine, the Viking engine. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so they're sticking out a little bit because, uh, frankly, they're just too big. Uh, to physically fit on the first stage properly. Uh, but then we also have the second stage here. So let's take a look at the configurations. And here we have BE3. Um, nine of them combined have 4,410 kilonewtons, so they're about 450 apiece. And my assumed uh, sea level ISP is 322. We don't have a definite number for this. And vacuum ISP 430. These seem reasonable and very conservative considering the space shuttle way exceeded these numbers. And uh, five ignitions, they do reignite. Remember, the BE-3 is the engine that Blue Origin uses on the new Shepard rocket. And that rocket has been demonstrated to be able to land safely, so it definitely reignited those engines. Um, and 18% minimum throttle, I think I got that from somewhere. And uh, again, that's necessary for landing safely, which means that this first stage should be recoverable. Uh, since the engines have demonstrated that before and that's important to us uh, in this new day and age and of course they burn hydrogen and oxygen so that's nice and clean and efficient so we've got those engines and then we have the BE3 vacuum engine and that's rated at 670 kilonewtons 20% minimum throttle um, negligible sea level ISP a 453 vacuum is probably optimistic, maybe, maybe not. Um, Blue Origins hasn't really given us much information on that, so I'm just going with what I can. So yeah, um, those are the numbers I am using, and they could be wrong, so let's consider that. I've named the rocket New Musk. Uh, Blue Origins has this pattern of naming it New Something, and since uh, this was inspired by Falcon 9, I decided to just go with New Musk. <laughs> um, uh, so here's our Delta V stats, and you can see thrust to weight ratio at the start 1.28, uh, max 3.7. The second stage starts out at 0.85. First stage burn time, 3 minutes and 40 seconds, which I think is about the limit if we want to have it land on a barge. Now, we don't have any landing equipment because we are assuming a, um, it is, we're going to test its expendable capability. And so that's what we're going for here. And the tanks are cryo tanks. So I haven't pulled anything with balloon tanks or anything. So this is a cryogenic tank. And this is a cryogenic tank. Very simple. And our payload on here right now, and we've got 9,500 meters per second according to this, our payload is 19 tons. 19 tons on a 350 ton rocket is pretty good. That's better than 5%. So let's see if it works. I have not tried to launch this yet. So let's see if it works. Okay, now it is a very stubby rocket, and part of the reason is because I'm using such um, large engines on the bottom here which I shouldn't be using we should have smaller engines but the other part is that we are using the exact same upper stage as is on the new Glenn rocket so this is the third stage from new Glenn same burn time that I have assumed I don't know the actual burn time but this is the third stage of new Glenn that I've used in previous videos so we're just bringing that in and assuming that they're going to use the same one and it's a seven meter stage because New Glenn is a seven meter rocket, so this ends up being a seven meter, seven meter stage as well. And yeah, that's why it's such a stubby rocket. But when you think about it, New Shepard is also sort of a stubby rocket, so maybe they would go with the same sort of pattern that they did there. Now our fuel margins are a little bit tight. I'm going to use 
um, KOS to manage the launch so that it's consistent. It might not be as efficient as me launching it because I can make corrections to what's going on while it's just, you know, doing what it normally does. But let me get the thrust weight numbers in and we'll see how well it does. I'm using the Falcon 9 launch script, incidentally. Oh, that didn't work out very well, did it? Okay, so I corrected the configuration for the BE3 engine. It was, uh, for some reason, set to pressure fed equals true and ullage equals false. It should be the other way around. So, yep, that's fixed. And here we go. Uh, I think I loaded the script in. Run new musk. Musk. Okay, looks like we're good this time. Oh. Hmm. Alright, we might need to give it a little bit more time to spool up. That happens when it hasn't really spooled up. Or, actually, you know what? Maybe we're under thrust. Maybe the VAB was lying to us. Oh, yeah, okay. So, we can't pack this much in. So much for the 19 tons. The VAB was lying about the sea level thrust to weight ratio. Okay, well, this is just barely acceptable. 1.11 sea level thrust to weight ratio. Um, yeah, that's not great at all. But, uh, yeah, we'll just go with it. It's three minute stage now, and we're carrying a 15 ton payload, so quite a bit uh, rescaled. Let's see how it goes, though, and adjust from there. Okay, the launch script accepted 1.11. It's not much. Especially against the drag that this is facing with such a large stage. Maybe I should just abandon the whole idea of using the same third stage as the New Glenn rocket. I mean, the third stage of the New Glenn rocket on the second stage here. We can reshape this to maybe more of a Falcon 9 like shape. Though, as far as landing stuff goes, that's not exactly the best idea as far as the first stage is concerned. Having a stubbier first stage seems a little bit easier. But yeah, we'll uh, give that a go. I have the configuration, the B3 configuration on the Viking engine, so we can try that out. Those are smaller engines physically to fit on the bottom of the first stage. Okay, we're about to complete the first stage. Again, expendable mode. Alright. It's pretty tight as far as the Delta V is concerned, and I think the script is set to release the fairings at 150 kilometers, so we've got a long way to go before we lose that mass. Okay, fairing separation, and we're short of delta V. In fact, one thing we could do is shape it to 5.4 meters and assume we're going to use the upper stage from the Vulcan rocket, assuming that the Vulcan rocket uses the BE-3U, the vacuum version of the BE-3. That could be a viable crossover thing. Still uh, wider than a Falcon 9, but perhaps reasonably tall and not as draggy. Okay, let's fix things. Okay, well, life would be a lot easier if the readout from MechJeb would actually tell me the correct sea level thrust to weight ratio, but we're gonna try and go with this. We're still gonna try for 15 tons. But now we have an extended third stage, 7 minutes and 30 seconds instead of just 6 minutes, still a cryogenic tank, and a somewhat shortened first stage, 2 minutes and 55 seconds instead of 3 minutes, 
and uh, that actually compensates enough for the mass, uh, the increased mass of the first stage, because we're talking about nine engines at the bottom here. And uh, now we have the smaller engines, though they still just barely fit on a 5.4 meter stage. And we'll see how this goes. The actual engine stats have not changed. So we've got that. All right, let's see if this works any better. Actually, you know, we could put the leaf down here and the blue origin texture up here. Now we have a lot more delta V to work with actually because we've extended that third stage. Um, we have 10,000 here, but the downside is that we've reduced the thrust to weight ratio of the upper stage. The beginning thrust to weight ratio is only 0.76, but on the other hand that better matches the stats of the Falcon 9. So since I'm basing this off of the Falcon 9 launch script, it should handle better overall. So let's edit. And I actually still don't know whether, actually let's check, can it get off the launch pad? 1.14, well, I guess that's going to be good enough for now. Well, these engines are frisky. And apparently their plume, well, let's see, yeah, uh, their plume's odd. They've got an odd plume, very odd plume. Well, awkward plume aside, this is looking good right now. Certainly a better shaped rocket overall. Oh, and the fairings are in the wrong place again. Okay, separation and ignition of the second stage. And this time the fairings should separate at 100 kilometers instead of 150, saving us some delta V there. So I might be mildly optimistic about the ISP, the specific impulse of this stage. On the other hand, I'm making the tanks heavier than they need to be. At this scale, uh, the tanks are probably lighter than the cryogenic tanks, though still heavier than the Bloom cryo tanks. So it's an odd sort of situation where, of course, as you scale up the tanks, they get more efficient and their structural mass is less with respect to the fuel mass. Um, so, yeah, we're, we may be heavier than we need to be. Alright, and orbit. With 388 meters per second left, we've brought 15 tons to orbit. And uh, we should probably not try and launch too much more than this. Uh, maybe 16 tons is possible, but uh, this is a fairly tight margin as it is. Let's see what would happen if we reserve fuel on the first stage uh, to the about the same amount that we would reserve on a Falcon 9 to land on a barge. So we're talking about 145 seconds total burn time. Oh, sorry, 175 seconds total burn time. Let's reserve 10%, which is very conservative. Okay, we've really decked it out in its full regalia now. We've got the fins. We've got the landing mount with the legs and everything, um, so those can extend. Whoop. Hey, there's even a sound with it. Okay, and we've got the whole structure down here in addition. Um, and yeah, uh, actually the thrusters, by the way, are helium. I decided to go with helium. It's better than nitrogen, <laughs> um, uh, at least as far as uh, ISP is concerned. So, and it reads 10,610 meters per second. We're going to reserve 18 seconds of fuel, which is 10% of the first stage. And I figure that that's enough to land it on a barge at least. So, yeah, we will see how that works out. We'll check out how much delta V is in the first stage once we separate. On the bright side, even though uh, the Vicus engines, or Viking engines, are supposed to be UDMH and N204 burning, or some variants of hypergolic like that, um, the plume seems reasonably suited for Hyderlox instead. It is sort of interesting how much this looks like New Glenn, once you've got all the additional bits on. And as long as you've got the textures right, of course it's much smaller than you, Glenn. 
Okay, we have separation of the first stage with the reserving of its fuel. It says it has 2,000 meters per second, which is not much actually, but perhaps enough to land on a barge. We may have to reserve more stage time than that. Wow, it's uh, it's really got kind of close though, as we can see. We are now actually going down at 144 kilometers. It really should be pitching up more than this, but I don't think it's allowed to. And that's because of the ending thrust weight ratio is too high. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Right now it's already got uh, 1.2 G's of acceleration, but it's whether it can put that to the appropriate use. Yeah, obviously because the first stage didn't push it as high as it did on the initial uh, non-recoverable launches. It's been a very close margin here, so it's safe to say that uh, this cannot carry more than this in a recoverable mode. Definitely not. Okay. Well, it's not going to like it, but we are technically in orbit. Um, yeah, let me just stop it. Just barely, 221 by 154, and this is still this stage. The payload that's separated, we can't see anymore, but um, we'll go back to the VAB to check that. But the expended stage is 7 tons here, and it's in orbit. So the absolute maximum that this could bring to orbit in expendable mode. Not expendable mode, reusable mode. And that number is 13 tons, which is pretty impressive, which is pretty impressive. Uh, personally, I think uh, we should just call it maybe 12 tons or even 10 tons and leave it at that. But anyway, uh, that is what it can do. I think I'm satisfied with my tests. I don't know if I'm ever going to use this again. We'll see. But on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.